Let's start um, last week, some very positive news from Scotland Yard. They said that they believe there's a reasonable chance of Madeline still being alive, and they identified nearly 200 leads that were worth following up. What was your reaction to that very positive news? Well, I guess we've always said the first point you made there. We know there's a, a real possibility that Madeline can still be found alive. But I guess for us it was important to hear the police saying that after they reviewed the evidence or, you know, at least part of the way through the evidence. Um, I think the, you know, it's excellent and it's the most hopeful I think we've been since the early days, to be honest, Martin. Um, and at this point we know there's a tremendous resource a very experienced team uh, reviewing all the information and a committed team with uh, Detective Chief Inspector Redwoods leading who really want to find Madeline and what happened. So if anyone does have information, uh, evidence, this is the time to come forward and we really are hopeful. There, the police optimism was based on what they identified as opportunities in which an abductor mm -hmm. could have taken Madeline. Well that really wasn't anything new because You've always said that between your regular checks on the children, there were opportunities. But we were told privately that there's other information that rather corroborates the idea that Madeline could still be alive. Are you aware of what else there is? Well, our understanding has always been that there's no evidence to suggest she's come to harm. And that means there's always a realistic possibility. That and combined with the fact that many other children have been found after very prolonged periods of abduction. And it's probably worth emphasising as well that when the younger a child's taken, uh, often they've been taken to be kept. And Madeline's in that, you know, a lot younger than a normal child who's taken, uh, you know, for sexual reasons. I mean, we are aware that new information has come in and also that new things have been identified within the material that's already there that haven't yet been investigated. I mean, obviously we hear about things in broad terms rather than specifics, to be honest, but obviously it's given us a lot of hope. And I, I guess I'm not surprised because having been through the files, you know, I've seen things that I've kind of think, gosh, you know, that needs to be looked at. But um, it's just good to have, you know, a team on board who are, are really determined to find it. And yet, after that optimism, we got that response from the Attorney General's office in Portugal. It's his decision about reopening the investigation, that there was no new facts. He talked about hypotheses and speculation. How did that make you feel? I think there's, there's two full facts. I, um, I do believe there is new information. Uh, there's information that we've seen that's come directly to us and it's been passed on. So we strongly believe that there is new information. Uh, I think how you treat some of the more historical things and identifying links, uh, there may be difference of opinion. But ultimately, a lot of the investigative opportunities lie in Portugal. And inevitably, to carry those out properly into fulfilment, then the case will have to be reopened. And you know, while Madeline's missing and the perpetrators are at large, then the case will need to be reopened. I've got no doubt do, about do you, that. Do you think it will be reopened? I think it will in due course. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, short of someone coming forward and saying, here, here she is, you know, our best chance of finding her, and also the person who's committed the crime, is by reopening the case. So, you know, hopefully, given time, assuming that everybody wants to find Madeline and wants to find the perpetrator, then, you know, I am hopeful that the case will be reopened. I don't think anybody expected the Portuguese authorities within 24 hours no, to announce no. the reopening. I mean, how far do you accept that there are complicated diplomatic niceties that have to be overcome? You know, we, we weren't expecting an overnight reaction. We've been in this situation for three and a half years. It took us a long time to get the review. The review is not finished, and let's not forget that. So th those o investigative opportunities, almost 200, have come from the first 20,000 pages. So you know, we're quite happy for the Metropolitan Police to be liaising with the Portuguese authorities, going through the proper process and presenting the evidence and, and real opportunities. And I think they'll make a very, very strong case. And, uh, and it, it makes a tremendous difference that it's not down to us. Um, we, do f we felt we were on our own for a very long time and it doesn't feel like that anymore. We really feel that... The UK authorities and the Metropolitan Police in particular really want to get to the bottom of this. 195 
leads could be interpreted as 195 missed opportunities. Any parent would feel very angry to learn that after a review of a quarter of the material, there are nearly 200 chances of, of, of yeah. clues. We, what, what do you do with that anger? Because there's we, no we point don't, getting we, Martin, we don't angers. feel like that. Honestly, we've, we've, just, always been we've got to a point now where we, we just want to go forward. We can't, we can't change it, but whilst it can be done, you know, let, let's, let's do it. In some ways, it's great that those leads are there because it gives yeah. us something to work with, which is why we, you know, we campaigned and petitioned for three and a half years to get the review yeah. in the first place. We knew if the case was just reopened, you know, people would be standing there going, OK, now what do we do? But at least with having the review and having these actions identified, there's stuff to work on. Yeah. You know, we've never... The mistakes have been well publicised, and we know there was resource issues, and just the, the data capturing and, and different things. And we also know that a lot of the, the police early on did try. You know, there was a big investigation, but um, it's actually better to know that there are still opportunities for us. And we just want those to be performed reasonably as any family would for a, a missing child or a serious crime that's been committed. You want to get to the bottom of it and bring those uh, responsible to justice. When you look at this age-progressed picture of Madeline at nine, what do you see? I actually see Madeline, to be honest. and. Um it's strange because although it's a marker of how many years have, have passed, um, as I say, I look at it and I can see her in it. And, and again, that gives me hope because I think, you know, I, I just want everyone to look at it, take a good, long, hard look at it and circulate it to as many people as possible. Because, I mean, I do believe it's a good resemblance of what she looks like today. Um, and I think it can be a really useful tool for the investigation. It's a bit She's difficult. She's done a great job, really. must be a bit difficult to look at a daughter you haven't seen for nearly five years. What, what, what are your thoughts? It is, I mean, I, I don't think, I don't look at it and think, that is Madeline. We know um, it's a resemblance. I don't think of it as Madeline. The important thing is um, challenging the assumption that Madeline is a four-year-old who's been, you know, who's frozen in time. She's not. Uh, she will have changed. And the public, we also know, are very forgiving in terms of resemblance to images. Um, and particularly children, they look at these pictures in a very different way. So uh, we know from America in particular that these images work a lot of the time. What are um, Sean and Emily's reaction to, mm. uh, to seeing that It was that funny picture? when we were starting the drafts with the artist, and, it, and to be honest, it hasn't changed that much from the original draft, actually. That's how close, I think, uh, Terry was when she did it. But we showed it to them and uh, we said, how, how old do you think this little girl is? And they said, mm, older than us. And I said, OK, so how old? And they said, oh, eight, maybe nine. So actually after that, we actually tweaked it to make it look a little bit older. But, um, and then they said, is, this, is that Madeline? And I said, oh, this is what we think she might look like now. So, you know, they're, they're, they're up, to, up to speed with everything and they understand why we've done it. So. How are you going to um, mark tomorrow, the fifth anniversary? Well, Jer Jerry's in, in work, to be honest. Um, I've got a mass that I'm going to go to for Madeline. Um, I'm spending the day with a friend, and then, as we've done the last few years, there'll, there'll be a service for Madeline. I mean, there, has, there, there will be in several places, to be honest, and uh, you know, it'll be with family, friends, and, and supporters. And, you know... I guess one of your abiding thoughts at times like this, well, all the time, I suppose, is that somebody knows mm -hmm. what happened. Yeah. What would you say to whoever it is, and there must be somebody, what would you say to them after five years? It's the same message. It's just not too late, you know. Um, please let us know, you know. Tell us where she is. Tell us what's happened. If you think you know, you know who's done it. If it's your brother, if it's your son, if it's your colleague, please do the right thing. You know, and it's not too late. It's really not. Just let us know. You've said in the past that you were very concerned that you were alone in mm -hmm. searching for Madeline. That appears to have changed now. Very and much. how encouraged are you by that? It's hard to emphasise. Um 
how important the difference is between this time last year and what we have now since the, the review was granted and they met and the resource and experience they've brought to bear and we, do, we don't feel like we're on our own anymore and at times in the past we have felt like it's been battle after battle and now we really feel that the British authorities are committed, absolutely committed and it's taken a tremendous burden away from Kate and I and Madeline's Fund and everyone else around us. And we're really grateful to the Metropolitan Police and we're also really grateful to the general public because without their support I don't think we'd have got the review either. So. And from the review to a reinvestigation, how confident are you that that will happen soon? I don't know when, but I mean, obviously, we hope it will happen soon. You know, we want to find Madeline. We want to find out what's happened. We want to find who's responsible for the crime. And I think the sooner we start looking at these leads and getting an, inve getting an investigation going, the better, really. If you don't look, you won't find. And do you have any idea what those leads are? What the important, perhaps the more important of those leads is? We know what quite a few of them are, but I wouldn't say by any means we're, we've been through. 195. Kate identified many, many of them herself, as you would expect. Um, but you know, the police are confident that these are actionable, and some of them are, you know, highest priority. So that's encouraging. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very Thank much, you. and good luck. Thank you, Martin. Thank you.